Anyway, what we're looking at here, this is the upper control arm bushing, and I have made this groove a little bit smaller. Okay, so I'm going to turn on the uh, turn the sketch on here to to look at it, and you can see the the larger OD is the original size of the the groove I had in there. Okay, and then the smaller one is uh, the new one, and this line represents see this arc right here. That is the surface of the ID of the bushing, and this line here is uh, from from there to the bottom of the new groove, basically, just so I could check, and you can see there it's a 0 0.0298, so it's basically 30 thousandths. Uh, that's half of what it was. It was about 60 thousandths. I didn't see any need to have it that big. So let's, uh, we'll turn the sketch back off there, and this is Fusion 360, if you guys don't recognize it. Um, so I don't have to do anything more with the the modeling that's taken care of so let's go down to cam now contour one if you look at this toolpath that is very convoluted and the reason being is is that the uh, the cutter has to come in and, and do a swipe in there it, it I wanted a toolpath that would run just the just the groove you know it would enter to a certain depth and then just cut along the wall and then pull back out. Okay, I succeeded in. I've I've come up, I've done it. I've got the tool path. I got to go through and regenerate them basically because I have it generated for the uh, original depth, the deeper depth. But what I wanted to show you how I did it, and maybe there's a better way. I'm sure there's a better way. Uh, I hope there's a better way. Anyway, you see all these points here. Okay. Uh, probably kind of hard to see the cursor there, but each of those points is where the cutter dips in and makes its cut. Okay, these are superfluous over here on the left, um, and there's some up here under the right, and that's because the uh, the grooves overlap each other. Okay, so I just ignored those. But what I did do is I came in here, and I... Tell it to simulate, okay, and then I come over and I click on the info, and this gives me the, I can go to any point, and it will give me the X, Y, Z coordinates. I didn't actually want to click on that because uh, uh, it brings the cutter down and then it's in the way. So I will just highlight over. So there's the first one, and you can see over on the right there that that gives me an X, Y, and Z position. Okay, and since it is going along this path, anywhere along that path is going to have the same uh, Z position, minus 0.24. So what I did was I came along here, and I highlighted, and I manually wrote down, recorded, each of these points, okay, all the way down. <clears throat> Now, I didn't do the bottom one here. Uh, I did do this one. Now, I took all of those points and then manually entered them into uh, G-code. You know, I, I manually wrote them into, into a G-code. So what we have here then is... I can... Oh, I'm in the middle of simulating. Let's see. Let's shut that back off. Uh... And I did the exact same thing for all three contours, okay? They all have the same point there and stuff like that. Uh, look how convoluted that is if you try to do all three at one time. Well, this is the toolpath screen on uh, Mach 3. I uh, went in and manually entered the G-code and... Uh, uh, from all the XYZ positions I recorded down from uh, Fusion 360. Okay, so that's what it looks like uh, the way it's generated right now. That's one of the uh, grooves. There's another groove. And the other groove is over here. So the bottom's a lot flatter than these are. These uh, go down at an angle um, more than I was thinking they would. 
yeah there we go that's pretty uh, close to level the bottom's pretty flat I can go I can go in and change these just by changing the Z coordinate on the uh, right there so let's see here doo, 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 doo. let's go back to and it's the first one on each of these so instead of uh, negative 0.16 let's do it at the same negative 0.24 that the slot starts at. Okay, I'll we'll just close that and save it. And let's go back to toolpath so we get a bigger picture. Regenerate toolpath. Alright, so I got it all rotated around here now, and the you can see the base plane is uh, flat because it's just giving us a dashed line there. Um, so you can see the the slots, the grooves, and uh, now you can see how flat the top is. The bottom, not perfectly flat, really don't care, it's perfectly fine the way it is. Uh, so now the trick is is to um, get this on the mill, get the mill set up, and then the part will get zeroed. The mill will get zeroed uh, to the part, and then this should work. We'll see. I still got a few other things like uh, feeds and speeds to put into the G code, but uh, we'll address that when we get on the mill.